So this laptop has fans that seem to be giving an error message every once in a while. So I've been told to replace them with these other fans here. So apparently these are the fans. So there you go. So just gonna go and swap them out. First things first, always remove the battery or unplug the battery in some form. You never want to have it uh, basically plugged in. You could still accidentally turn it on and it could cause some issues. So it's never wise to do that. It's got the rubber feet. I like that because if the rubber feet falls off, you can just buy a new piece. Apparently, you have to take this whole damn thing out. Not a fan. Okay, well, probably have to. Really? Okay. A little bit stronger of a magnet.
And those are, I can't remember, let's see, they are M2.5 by 5 starbit screws, or no, uh, T8, so M2 by 4 T8. So this is a T8 bit, this is pretty commonly used. Always handy to have a variety of tools on hand. Never actually taken apart one of these exact models before, so this is sort of just going off a hunch as to what I need to check. When you've been through as many laptops as I have, they all kind of start blending together. They use the same common themes and design philosophies and all that fun stuff. Especially all these consumer grade machines. Don't get me wrong, they're not bad, they're just not as good as they should be. Okay, what have we got? Okay. So you have to check the perimeter and kind of go outside in, find all the possible screws that they have. When you think you've got them all, there's more. It's because I hate losing the M2 screw, it goes back in place. This is the webcam connector. surrounded by laptops here so don't mind don't mind the mess I guess I should probably care especially if I'm making videos whoops don't listen to what I say not as I do okay so there's one more Like I said, there's just screws everywhere. The real trick is putting them all back together and not forgetting any. Every real laptop tech I've ever talked to says as long as the laptop doesn't uh, fall apart and you're not uh, missing too many screws, the real kicker is how many is too many. Um, yeah. <laughs> all right, well, let's start unplugging cables to be on the safe side because who knows how this will flex when you start pulling things and trying to split it apart. Sometimes they could yank, they could pull, break, all that fun stuff. It's not very fun for me because if it breaks, guess what? Gotta fix and replace the customer's computer. Technically this is my friend Ryan. He runs a computer shop up front. He does repairs. I do recycling. So mostly I'm involved in the business of taking apart things and not putting them back together. Don't tell him that, though. He thinks I know what I'm doing. Cool. Alright, so that being a very soft plastic, I'm going to use a soft plastic in return. One of these little guys, bendy spudgers. I feel like bendy spudger would make for an amazing band name that does covers of some sort of 
punk music or something fun. Okay, I feel a little bit of flexing. So I probably... There we go. Also, please ignore the long fingernails. Those are a sign of someone who uses them all the time for taking apart stuff, like me. They're very handy. And if they break, that comes with the territory. You just save money on a tool that you don't have to replace. You just have to grow it back. I guess this is probably why I'm considered to be a little bit on the weird side. That's okay. Weird is good. Okay, so it's flexing. Here's that. Maybe is that flex there? How's that? Connect. Okay, so it looks like I have to take the trackpad out, so let's do that next. So I've been thinking of different ideas to use ChatGPT. Uh, actually, do I need to take that? Uh, sure, that looks maybe. But uh, I don't know. Everyone kind of thinks about ChatGPT and be like, hey, you know, it's going to change the world. And yeah, duh. I guess the real question is, uh, what can I use it for? So I still have a job in five years. I guess that's also a question for you as the viewer. I think uh, it's going to take our jobs. I don't know if we need to take that part out. Let's see. Are we going to have jobs in five years? Or we think we're going to be screwed? Are we all going to be like, hey man, I'll see you in the bread line when we go get our government rations at the soup kitchen? Oh, man, how is that? Okay, so I think you might have to take this out. I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's going to change things, but you know, it's kind of like uh, the automobile, you know, came out. Horses didn't suddenly just disappear. They just had different jobs, you know, like, uh, I guess less daily manual work and more, uh, you know, glue factory work. But you know, hopefully uh, I make for a decent flavor of Soylent. That would be nice. I think I'd be delicious. But then again, I'm not the car target demographic. I guess robots would be. Come on. Why does this feel like it's still... There's something keeping it from popping. Oh. There you go. That was not very elegant, but... There you go. Trackpad. There was a piece of that kind of static, anti-static kind of tape that's about, yeah, I don't know. I don't know exactly what that's called. And then that popped out. Okay, cool. So let's check, make sure there's no issues. All right, so we've got a keyboard ribbon cable. So we're gonna try to do this the proper way. We're going to use the end of this flat spudger to try to pop that out. That'll be fun to put back in. And then we've got usually enough leeway, yep, to be able to pop this guy out. Pull slide. That looks like your power button. Cool. There you go. There's your palm rest. 
Okay, so we've got fan number one, fan number two. Which one's that? Is that one? That's going to be... Ah, there we go. Okay, so that's right. This one's left. Excellent. Okay, so not too bad. Seeing as this laptop is relatively new, I'm not... Uh, I'm not going to repaste it. Considering the, the issue was the fans would give error messages because they would randomly stop. We will want to check for debris, see if there's anything stuck in there. Occasionally fans can have globs and clumps of hair get stuck in there. So you generally want hair to be on your head or on, you know, your animal or you know, whatever pet's body and not inside your actual computer. If it's inside your computer, something has gone wrong and you need to either clean it or you need to make sure you still have a pet because, uh, yeah, it's just not. Hair belongs not here. So with these little connectors, one thing I like to do is I like to wiggle left, right, left, right, left, right until they start coming loose. Never want to pull straight out because you can occasionally break the plastic and you still got the thing in there. Never pull by the cables. You'll yank them out. I mean, these are being replaced anyways, so it doesn't matter as much. But there's your old fan. And then here's your other old fan. So let me see if I can demonstrate on this guy. But yeah, basically, sometimes people will just kind of go, you know, you've got your little tape that supports it. They'll so pull it like this, and that, oh god, cringe, no, bad. So you can see the strain that it has. They actually glue the cables in place to try to see if that, like, helps. It does, but, you know, you're screwed if you yank it out. Like, there's nothing you can do, basically, unless you really want to spend a whole bunch of time. It would just be better spent buying a new fan and waiting and telling your customer that, uh, I don't know, you made a mistake. But your customer's never supposed to know that. So just tell them that uh, the factory sent you something that was incorrect. I don't know. Blame it on something. Never admit fault. Just kidding. These are really not that dirty. Just doing this because why not? usually not a big sign of an issue but the copper appears to be slightly discolored so that would make sense if the laptop was getting extremely hot because this is usually supposed to be you know copper it's supposed to be kind of a brownish orange color not like red and purple and kind of rainbowy so that's interesting so yeah um, I'm just kind of line these guys up, slide them back in. There we go. And plug it back in. Okay, so now begins the fun process of putting it all back together. I hate this part. It's way more fun taking things apart, not putting them back together. It's funny, I started fixing computers because I originally didn't know how to put them back together. Because, well, when you get in trouble for taking apart your parents' computer when you're like 12, and uh, you don't have a good explanation as to why it happened and why you couldn't back put it back together, you get grounded, put in trouble for a long time. It's a really good way of teaching you how to try to want to put things back together. So, turns out computers are not exactly like Legos, but they are, I don't know, sort of like them. They're just expensive, really fragile, and people tend to shout at you when you break them. So I guess actually they really are kind of like Legos also best avoided if you don't step on them stepping on computers does hurt however I think Legos do hurt a little bit more 
the meme is still very much alive. Oh god. Bless America. Freaking A. This is after shipping things for like six hours. I don't know why I agree to do work when I'm exhausted from working. Cool. Okay. That looks better. So next thing is we want to put the palm rest back on. If I remember correctly, I have a long power ribbon cable. Feeds back in. We have our power or our ribbon cable for a keyboard. Not as long, so we want to be a little bit more careful. Let's try to get a better angle so you can see what I'm doing here. Basically, I like to kind of have to like hold it in between a little bit. Um, it's a little bit more awkward because I'm trying to show what I'm doing, but this part's usually really annoying. Once you kind of line it up, you put it in there while you're holding it. Push down, ribbon cable. That's a fail. You want to make sure it's perfectly lined up. So line it up and then push down. There you go. Should feel like it's pretty natural. Shouldn't have to force anything down. Okay, so one other thing. When you push this back, you want to make sure that your cable that's supposed to go around the corner, fold around, can. So now we kind of slightly tap push things back. So there were just those two ribbon cables. I had a moment there where I thought, uh oh, did I forget something? But no. There's just keyboard. This is the backlight ribbon right here. We have the trackpad, sometimes referred to as the TP. Yes, they are TP. Okay, so we want to remember that we have these flat screws that go here. Having a magnetic screwdriver does make a huge difference. It's not the end of the world if you don't, but it is really, really helpful. It's best if you have one that has some form of... You can actually get pretty good magnets. Um, you want to put them kind of near the end, typically. Maybe I'll show how to pull one from a hard drive. Those are actually really good. Neodymium magnets are great. Old IMAX, if you tear one of those down, you get those from the corners of the glass. It's usually like the 2008 to 2012, I think. And then they started doing all that tape nonsense. Tape is terrible to use in a screen like that. I really don't like that because that made it so much, not just harder, but it made it so much more wasteful because it was no longer a toolless removal. You could use your fingernails literally before. Now you have to use either spudger or it's a destructive method. Okay. So since that it requires us to push this part down because they like to snap this crap in. I hate that. I can understand why they did that though. That keeps the trackpad flush and it doesn't start you know, popping up over time. Okay, now we have these little two screws that go over here that hold the little button down. Come on. Excellent. There's a reason I'm not using an electric screwdriver because this is a customer's computer. I generally don't want to use something that could over torque. You want to feel the screws so you don't strip anything or rip any screw holes. Uh, the little like star looking things like this guy. If you ever over torque and remove one of those, that's bad news because that's, I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it is 
not good. Because now you have a damaged part that you caused on your customer's computer. This is technically my friend's customer, but customer of my customer is my friend. That's plugged in. Now we have these things here. Where does that go? Oh, that goes over on the right side. So we'll probably switch that. We'll have Wi Fi cable go through this way. I feel like this was probably the one. So, anyhow, you see any good movies recently? I'm not sure why I'm asking you, but uh, I'm just gonna pretend that I can hear you. So, I actually recently rewatched for probably the eighth time uh, SLC Punk. It was a wonderful movie, great movie. And I love it because it's local to Utah. And hey, guess what? That's where I live. It actually has a lot of scenes from places that I've been to before. It's really funny because it's like... There's a scene with... Oh, uh, the liquor store. Utah has this meme where they kind of... The state doesn't really care about like liquor and stuff like that. Even though it's a massive tax revenue. Generating thing... But uh, they sort of neglect all the stores, and it's, you know, that's kind of government for you. They just don't care. People buy it. Why would they pay more money to fix it? They only give more money if it doesn't work. So it works. Therefore, they never get updated. So they literally have the same shelves that this movie has. They videotaped inside the store. I don't even know if they were even supposed to, but I feel like Utah wouldn't even allow that because that's how strict they are about that kind of thing but they haven't updated the shelves and they're literally the same freaking shelves the store looks almost identical the only thing that changed to sign back in like the late 90s was blue it says liquor store on the sign that's on there now is red it's kind of funny they go up uh to the there's a cathedral that they visit near the end it's uh kind of amazing that place uh my old stomping ground I went to school up that way and uh, blows my mind how basically nothing has changed okay what am I doing oh yes I need to put ah this is a different part got your little Kind of like a wing nut sort of design. Holds down the uh, connectors. It is a pain in the butt if you ever remove those, but they are doable. They're kind of simple, but they're just so small that it's just it's not worth it. You don't want to mess with that. You don't want to deal with the pain of trying to fix something like that because the one, it'll take you a while. You can do it, but like you're not making any extra money by doing that. You're wasting your time. And, uh, yeah, you could be doing something else. So every time we rip one of those, I always go, ha, ah, that cost me $20, even though it technically doesn't really cost anything if you can fix it. But opportunity cost, that's what I mean. Being self-employed, opportunity cost is something you always want to be looking at. Always, always, always thinking about it. You want to think about it probably more than you want to I mean honestly if you're not thinking about what you could be doing instead of what you are doing you're doing the wrong thing if you're running your own business you always want to be analyzing and thinking about what you could be doing better improving yourself learning something that's a good one if you're watching this video I commend you for learning something new if you're learning something new or you're reinforcing something or you're just killing time, or for whatever reason you like listening to me talk. I don't know why anybody does. I don't like my, you know, 
sound of my own voice, but some people might. But uh, it's always a good thing learning new things. Honestly, you can basically never learn enough. And in this world, you need to keep learning new things. That's how you stay on top of your game. And I've been told that's what people like, is being on top of their game. So one thing that is nice, uh, this is upside down, but this is M2.5 by 8, and these ones are, you know, 2 by 3, M2.5 by 5. So you can tell just by the length, that one's longer, so clearly it's got to be this one. I do like that they do label these from time to time. Sometimes they forget. Sometimes it is actually really helpful because it gives you a good indication of kind of the layer that you're working on. Because these are basically like a giant layered cake that's very expensive. Um, you want to follow that layer as best as you can. Because if you forget steps, then typically you'll end up making mistakes, ending up with too many screws at the end, ending up missing screws, ending up getting screwed. Ah, see what I did there? Um, as I dropped the screw. Oh, God damn it. You want to avoid having screws magnetized to the speaker grill. The only reason why is that it will scratch the uh, little dome. Those are very, very, very fragile. And it sounds awful when you scratch it, and it pierces. And I don't want to have to replace that. So, anyways... What kind of NVMe is that? Oh, it's a SATA? Yeah. Oh, freaking A. That's actually kind of unimpressive that it's a SATA drive. That's actually not... Mm, I mean, I guess, yeah, that looks like a Dell part number as well, so that's stock. I wonder what year this is supposed to be, because that's woefully underwhelming. It's actually really not great. You'd think a gaming laptop would at least have an NVMe. I mean, what's the RAM on this? Probably just 8? Yeah? 2400 megahertz? That's probably what, like... 8th gen. I mean, it's kind of forgivable. But I mean, it has a 2.5 inch hard drive bay. Like, what do you expect, I guess? It's probably a budget gaming laptop that's... I don't know, it was an Inspiron 7000 series gaming laptop for like 800 bucks brand new. I mean, I guess you get what you pay for. But... At least the hinges are solid. Credit where credit's due. Ah, there we go. home stretch we're last under 10 screws we're what like two, four five six yeah not bad generally not too painful doing this 
at least I don't have any stripped out screws to remove or fight or any broken screw eyelets or holes or anything like that. Super annoying, very frustrating. I don't like giving bad news to people, so. And we just have this little grill thing left. And then once we get all of that done, Perfect, lined up. Cool. And there you go. Let's plug this back in. Hopefully it doesn't explode, catch fire. Fireworks are only cool when you're not the one paying for them. Cool. <clears throat> I guess it's kind of, fans are going to work, they're, you know, it's hard to test something that's inconsistent, when it's inconsistent, uh, you just have to hope that your diagnosis was correct, and you can try to test it as much as you can, so I'm going to try to get into the Dell Diagnostic real quick, another thing is if you hold power, sometimes they like to kick up, yeah, there you go, fans work fine. Cool, so there you go. Basically, we're done there. Um, but there you go. That's how you uh, replace the fans on this Dell Inspiron laptop. That fan, this fan. Not particularly dusty or dirty or nasty, but customer wants, customer gets, as long as they're paying for it. So. I didn't diagnose this one, but I trust my friend uh, Ryan with Heptech to be pretty on the ball. He's been doing this for 12 years. I've been doing this for 13 years. We both trust each other to make the right call. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. Toodles.